excited about today. And so I can introduce you to uh, Zeevan, who I have known since 2016 when she started a PhD um, with myself. Then unfortunately, or fortunately for me, unfortunately for her, I left for Australia. So um, she decided her other supervisor wasn't good enough, so she changed. <laughs> And then she did a PhD somewhere else. Um, but nevertheless, we've stayed in contact and uh, have a great relationship, uh, collaborative and as mentee mentor. And now she's here, which I'm very happy about. Happy about. She, she um, commenced her PhD in 2021 and is now a postdoctoral fellow in Luxembourg. And she'll show you where that is in a second. Very small country. Um, and she is also, I'm also very proud and impressed by her and her work and what she will show you. It's super interesting. She's also recently won something that is uh, comparable to the DECRA over here, just from Luxembourg, a fellowship for three years, four years. Yep. So congratulations again to that. And um, part of what she will be showing us is um, a part of that fellowship. And she has some great collaborators, as you can say. And um, yeah, so Zeevan is um, hoping to uh, collaborate with many of us also. So if you like what she's doing, please feel free to talk to her, chat to her at any time. Um, and now, without further ado, I'll let you enjoy her um, very important and amazing work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa, for, the, for introducing me. Um, I also thank you for the opportunity to introduce my preliminary find, uh, findings on the self-determinant -determin parenting, investigating parental involvement and emotion regulation using, using a person-centered approach. And this work would not be possible without my co-authors, Teresa, Guy, and Luis. Gesina and Samuel, and they have not seen the slide yet, so it will, you will be the first. Uh, even Teresa uh, has not seen it. Okay, before we will de delve into the topic, I would like to say uh, a few more sentences about myself and Luxembourg, where I work. Basically, I'm a Chinese German in Luxembourg. Um, I was born and raised in Shanghai, um, China, and I went to Germany with my husband, German husband, uh, in 2010, and I uh, studied psychology at undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate uh, levels at the University of Bielefeld. And I, was, I also spent my first two and a half years of my postdoc time uh, in Bielefeld. And before two, uh, one and a half years, I went to Luxembourg. This is the beautiful Luxembourg city. And I think most of you have not been in Luxembourg yet. Mm -hmm. Luxembourg is a very tiny country and is surrounded by Belgium, Germany and France. And we are very proud of our languages because we have three official languages, French, Luxembourgish and German. And we have a very small number of population, only around 600,000 um, people living there, I think it's comparable with Aston in Germany. And um, Luxembourg is the richest country in the world. And this is our campus in Veva. It's located here. So it's very close to France and very famous for the French tradition and French food. Yeah, um, let me also say some words to my research group. Uh, Samuel recruited me from Bielefeld to Luxembourg one and a half years ago, but he left us unfortunately last uh, last month and he has now a new professorship at the Goethe University in Frankfurt. And Christine has taken over our, our research group. Uh, she has a, a professorship in cognitive neuroscience and our research group uh, consists of five postdocs. Um, they are Anka Katachina, uh, um, Anastasia, and Luis and myself. And we also have four PhD students there, Angelica, Kazina, Huiyun, and Xiaowei. And we have very different research interests. Like Anka focuses on computational thinking in very young children. And Anastasia, Huiyun, and Xiaowei 
are in the field of human computer interaction. And um, Luis Gazina and I focus on emotion, emotion regulation. I'm also very interested in parenting and uh, parental burnout, but also school burnout. And Gazina is my PhD student. So uh, now let's come to business. Um, in our study, we define parental involvement as parenting practices in the academic domain that aim to promote children's academic development. And traditionally, parental involvement has been divided into school-based involvement and home-based involvement, depending upon where the um, parental involvement activities occur. Like school-based involvement involves activities um, attending parent uh, teacher conf uh, conferences and home-based involvement includes all activities outside uh, the school complex, like um, going to library with the child and then reading together and homework supervision. And although the overall research shows a positive effect of parental involvement out on child development and also school performance, uh, meta-analysis and recent longitudinal and experimental studies show that not all forms of parental involvement are if equally effective. Rather, the quality of particular uh, parental involvement activities matter. And one way to determine whether a parental involvement activity um, has high quality is the use of self-determination theory as a framework. Um, and researchers in, uh, self, uh, in um, parental involvement research has proposed four forms of parental involvement. They are autonomy, supportive involvement, controlling involvement, provision of structure, and emotional warmth. Um, autonomy supportive involvement, involvement includes encouraging the, um, the child's self initiated problem solving and discussing constructively with the child about academic problems and issues. And the controlling involvement includes uh, excessive psychological pressure using conventional regards and a direct instruction. And in comparison, provision of structure refers to providing the child with a sense of uh, predictability and personal efficacy to meet um, academic challenges. And finally, emotional warmth refers to showing interest in the child's uh, school life and providing emotional support, as well as encouraging continuous um, self-regulation in achievement uh, situations challenging achievement situations. And according to self-determination theory, adolescents profit the most from parental involvement when parents satisfy their sexual psychological needs for autonomy, competence, and relatedness. And accordingly, autonomy support, provision of structure, and emotional warmth can satisfy respectively the need for autonomy, competence, and relatedness. And when these needs are satisfied, then parental involvement contributes to adolescents' self-determinant, learning motivation, independent problem solving, and true self-esteem uh, and social emotional development. And on the contrary, um, controlling involvement frustrates the need for autonomy. And autonomy is particularly critical in adolescence because achieve, achieving autonomy is one of the most important developmental tasks in adolescence. And um, indeed, controlling involvement is related to fragile um, self-esteem, lower school engagement, and a pronounced vulnerability to risky behavior and affiliation uh, with deviant peers. Yeah, and the parenting is very complex and also very emotional. And uh, in particular, parental involvement um, in the, the school, the home based parental involvement research, like uh, in homework supervision, has frequently found that such situations are very conflictful and very emotional for parents and adolescents because it's directly related to the academic problems of the child and 
um, in such very emotional situations, parental emotion regulation may come into play. And it refers to the processes by which individuals influence which emotions they have, when they have them, and how they experience them and express them. And uh, more recently, uh, SDT researchers have proposed three um, emotion regulation styles in line with the self-determination framework. Um, they are integrative emotion regulation, controlled emotion regulation, and unmotivated emotion regulation. Integrative regulation refers to experiencing a negative emotion with a non-judgmental attitude and exploring it as a source of information um, about yourself. So it's in line with um, a kind of reflective and mindful uh, regulation, and it's um, a positive form of emotion regulation at the internal boundary. And in comparison, control, um, emotion regulation refers to controlling negative emotions by ignoring, uh, avoiding or hiding uh, such emotions and uh, it leads to that the experienced emotion is not fully accessed or brought to awareness. And in comparison, uh, unmotivated emotion regulation, also emotional dysregulation, refers to the feeling of being overwhelmed and being unable to manage uh, one's own emotions. And the researchers have found that parental integrative emotion regulation is associated with um, higher parenting competence and the supportive parenting behavior. Um, and in and the parental controlled emotion um, regulation can impair the capacity um, to share personal issues and handle uh, negative emotions in relationships. And um, finally, dis um, emotional dysregulation. Um, narrows the parental perspective and uh, focuses uh, parental attention on um, aversive aspects of their children, and um, it undermines parental ability to support their children's needs. And indeed, parental emotional dysregulation has been found to be associated with more harsh, punitive, um, or neglectful parenting behavior, and finally impairs adolescent and the child development. Yeah, although more and more studies in parental involvement are applying the self-determination theory, most often um, use um, traditional variable um, centered approaches. In our study, we use a person-centered approach. Um, it enables us to identify the combinations of the different parental involvement dimensions in line with the self-determination theory as an undivided whole. And it also enables us to determine if subgroups um, of our uh, parents exist within a given population. And overall, we have um, four uh, main research questions. The first is to um, objectives. The first is to identify the number of parental involvement profiles based on the four parental involvement dimensions and also their corresponding characteristics. Um, we assume there would be four or five profiles, supportive, controlling, laissez-faire, uninvolved or in indifferent parents uh, in Supportive parental involvement um, profile would be characterized by high levels um, of all three need supportive um, dimensions, but uh, lower levels of uh, psychological control. And the controlling profile would be the upside. Um, and the less fair parents would be what be um, emotionally supportive that show uh, lower levels of autonomy support, a low structure, and a low psychological control. And uninvolved parents would be, um, will show uh, low levels of all four dimensions. And maybe there are also a group of parents who are indifferent in their um, parental involvement in terms of the four parental involvement dimensions. And the second research objective is to estimate the stability of these involvement profiles. 
because um, our time interval is not very big. I will uh, go into the details in the next slide, and uh, we assume that will be at least moderate stability. And the third is to investigate whether parental emotion regulation styles predict um, the profile membership um, after controlling for relevant social demographic factors and also parental health. And we assume that higher levels of integrative regulation would predict a higher probability of belonging to a profile which um, is more supportive. And the final research objective is to investigate the longitudinal impacts of involvement profiles on parental mental health and need satisfaction, um, as well as frustration and their children's achievement. Um, we assume that parents in more adaptive involvement profiles um, will be more likely to experience self-determination in their parenting and their children are more likely to show better school performance. Um, this study is embedded uh, within our project standing for predictors and outcomes of parental burnout and parental educational involvement. Um, it has a three wave design. Um, we now have uh, wave one and wave two data sets and um, the preliminary uh, results of this study um, are based on this two, uh, the first two waves data. And we conducted the study um, through prolific and eligible parents were American parents who have at least one child in grades six to uh, nine. And we pre-registered our um, study design hypothesis and analytical uh, strategies before we collected data. Now let's come to the samples, uh, sample of the study. Um, the sample consists of uh, around 1,000 parents who participated at both um, uh, at both waves, and we achieved a gender balanced sample. And on average, they were uh, 43 years old, and uh, the academic levels of the parents were overall relatively high. Um, about 60 percent of them had a bachelor's degree or even higher. And on average, they had um, 2.35 children. And the parents were um, after to refer to a specific child, namely the youngest child of who um, are enrolled in grades two, two, uh, six to nine, if the parent um, has more than one child in this grade range. And overall, 470. Six parents refer to girls, and um, among them, uh, 128 were enrolled in elementary school, and about 900 in secondary school, and over 240 had a disability. So we assessed the three uh, emotion regulation styles, the integrative uh, control and the unmotivated emotion regulation and the parental involvement dimensions, the four dimensions, autonomy support, um, psychological control, provision of structure in the and emotional wounds. And we also measured um, parental em uh, emotional exhaustion um, as outcome and parental need satisfaction and frustration were adapted uh, from um, a previous survey, and we asked the parents to disclose their children's school performance uh, from the last uh, report card in math, in English, and science. And we controlled for uh, the parental gender, uh, the child gender, uh, family SES, and the parental mental and health, um, mental and physical health issues. So, um, at first, we uh, conducted a global CFA model, uh, including all constructs in our study. Um, there are the three uh, emotional regulation styles, the four parental involvement um, dimensions, and emotional exhaustion and or frustration and um, and the satisfaction to see whether all the constructs are distinct to each other. And it's the case 
And then in the next step, um, we um, tested the longitudinal measurement environments of each construct and uh, vector scores of the CFA were then saved and then used in further analysis. And in the uh, next step, we um, conducted um, uh, cross-sectional profile analysis to see how many profiles um, were, were there in each wave. And then we combined um, these profile, these cross-sectional profile uh, into a longitudinal profile to see um, whether they were similar in their structure, their dispersion, and this, their um, distribution. And to um, then we uh, run a latent transition analysis to see how stable the profiles were and then integrated the predictors and the outcomes. So uh, we found five profiles in each wave. Um, I labeled them as auto, um, support, uh, indifferent, uninvolved, supportive, anti-authoritarian, and controlling uh, involved profiles. So indifferent profile is characterized by a, a moderately high level of all four dimensions and uninvolved moderately low levels um, almost of all dimensions. And supportive um, profile is characterized by a high level of all three sub need supportive dimensions, but low level uh, on um, psychological control. And anti-authoritarian profile is characterized by high level of um, autonomy support um, and sex, um, emotional warmth, but very only moderately high level of provision of structure and a very low level of um, psychological control. And in comparison, controlling involvement profile um, is characterized by low level of all three need supportive um, dimensions and moderately high level of um, psychological control. And if we see, um, have a look at the profile size, we see that supportive profile uh, is very small. And in comparison, the indifferent and the controlling profile were quite big. And here's also my first question. Are the profile labels appropriate? Maybe you can discuss a bit later. <laughs> and now let's have a look at the stability and changes of these profiles over time. And um, the controlling profiles are very stable. Over 80% of the pairs remain in this profile from wave one to wave two. And the supportive profiles has the lowest stability, and almost 40% um, of the pair of parents in this profile switch to indifferent um, at wave two. And the indifferent profile and the uninvolved profile show a bit less, um, a bit um, higher stability than compared to supportive profile. Now let's have a look at the predictors of these profiles. Um, the social demographic variables have very few effects on the profile membership. And in line with our uh, assumption, the integrative um, emotional regulation predicts the profile membership. In particular, we can see here, um, higher um, higher Integrative emotion regulation predicts um, higher probability um, being found in supportive profiles compared to controlling profile. This regulation is also uh, largely um, in in line in with our um, assumption. We can see here um, the higher levels of dysregulated uh, emo emotion. Um, are more likely to be found in uh, in different profile compared to supportive and 
anti-authoritarian profiles. You need a second to look at the tables. Okay. It should be uh, outcomes of the involvement profiles uh, after controlling for all the predictors and all covariates. Um, we see that um, supportive profile has the high, highest levels um, of autonomy satisfaction and competence sat satisfaction as well as uh, 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 satisfaction, but together with authoritarian. And um, controlling profile has the highest levels of uh, autonomy frustration together with the first two um, profiles and has the levels of competence uh, frustration and has the level of uh, related frustration together with the second profile. And also in terms of emotion and exhaustion, I mean, I see um, the parents who are who are found in profile five, the controlling profile shows the highest level of um, emotional exhaustion, whereas all other profiles not significantly predict um, emotional exhaustion. However, in terms of school performance, we could not find, find any um, effect. So let me uh, summarize the preliminary uh, findings. We found overall five um, profiles. They are indifferent, uninvolved, supportive, anti-authoritarian, and controlling. And over four months, uh, we found moderate to very high stability of involvement profiles. And overall, there were um, few effects of psych so um, social demographic factors and the parental health issues on the profile membership and um, integrative emotional regulation. Um, the effect is in line with our assumption that higher level of integrative emotional regulation predicts a higher likelihood of belonging to more supportive profiles, whereas dysregulation predicts a greater likelihood of being uh, found uh, in dis dysfunctional profiles. And in terms of the outcomes of um, the involvement profiles, we found that uh, supportive involvement contributes to parental needs uh, satisfaction, whereas controlling um, involvement um, predicts um, higher levels of parental burnout. I was wondering why was the controlling involvement profile so stable? And this finding is also um, comparable with our other studies using the German uh, samples. And I assume that uh, such parents are more likely to use controlled or unmotivated emotion regulation, in, in particular in challenging um, home learning situations. And they may be very reactive to their children's behavior, also emotions and performance. And we we also didn't find any uh, gender differences in involvement profiles. Although in our previous studies um, using longitudinal German samples, we found that boys are more likely to uh, perceive uh, controlling uh, parenting. But here we use only parent reports and we have a gender balanced sample, whereas our journal samples um, are um, overall based on the mother's reports or the, the children's uh, self reports. And uh, in addition to my question on uh, the label of uh, the labels of profile, the profiles, I also have further questions like um, I include um, parental need satisfaction and frustration as outcomes of the profile, the involvement profiles. I would, inter I would be interested in your opinion. Would you include them as predictor or maybe there are, recipro there are reciprocal relationships between involvement and um, the need satisfaction or frustration? And related to this question, as a methodological question, is it possible to uh, test the reciprocal relationships 
using the latent transition analysis as a messaging model. Um, I haven't uh, I haven't thought um, in depth about uh, the implications, but I can conclude that emotion regulation should not be overlooked um, in parental involvement research, and parents may benefit from parenting program with the focus on emotion regulation, emotion coaching. And um, there are, of course, limitations, like we use only parental self-reports and um, we don't include um, adolescents' reports, but it's also because we conduct a study um, through polyphilic, it's um, very difficult to include minors. And um, the, 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 short, the, the time intervals in our study is very short, so only four, um, with four months. And, and now we are looking forward to our Wave 3 data, uh, which will come in May uh, this year. And together with Teresa, we are planning an experience sampling phase within the POP study. And I'm very interested in the flexibility and the variability of the use of different emotion regulation strategies, including different intra and in interpersonal emotion regulation of, of the parents. And we plan the study for June um, this year and a follow up in September. So if you are interested in um, collaboration, just let me know. And um, we also have a very fancy data set we collected last year during the Christmas. Um, we focused on parental burnout and parental stress in the Christmas, Christmas time. So um, how uh, emotional dream up or parents to prepare for the gifts during this time. And we have a pre and post design and then in between we have 65 um, experience, experience sam sampling measurement waves and we have overall almost 300 UK parents uh, with very, um, very uh, few uh, very few missing values when overall we have almost 15,000 data points we are the, analyzing data now and so if you are interested let me know <laughs> and this is um the project which um teresa also mentioned uh, it's upcoming uh, in a few months in luxembourg uh, in this project we will uh, unpack parental involvement in challenging achievement situation into cognitive, emotional, and behavioral uh, aspects, and uh, to investigate how parental involvement interact with child performance, child um, um, behaviors, and emotions. And we also plan an intervention study in Luxembourg. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Any questions? What type of intervention study are you planning? I ask that because um, it's very interesting research. Congratulations. This is so badly needed and it's really interesting to see how your results are unfolding. We've been trying to develop uh, what we call a deadly home reading intervention. Mm -hmm. It's for Indigenous kids, but it's teaching uh, parents of young children mm -hmm how to, like, they're in uh, preschool up to year one, so they're yeah. quite young, um, how to, to read literacy and numeracy and trying to engage parents in that. So I'm wondering, based on your research and the interventions that you're developing, what is the what should we be coaching parents to do to take benefit of your results? So the um, intervention study in the UPCAS project, which is upcoming in Luxembourg, is based on our results of the panel study, which will be conducted uh, previously to um, the, 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 the intervention study. And we will focus on um, the appraisals of the parent within like a um, reading situation or home of supervision. Um, why? Uh, some interactions are conflictful and which emotions are triggered and 
what are the underlying reasons for such emotions. And I think it's important to um, that the parents are aware of their own emotions, but also their children's emotion and to validate um, their emotions of the, of the children, of the child. And then if also um, our results show if parents can regulate their own um, emotion in a positive way, then they maybe feel more confident in their parenting and show higher um, parental um, com parenting competence and they will have more um, psychological capacity and emotional capacity to respond to their children in a more positive way. I take Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about emotion regulation, a phenomenon how you measured it. And you measured a especially controlled regulation. It was uh, avoiding hiding, avoiding uh, emotion, but it was controlled. Yeah. Uh, for me, the most critical issue is uh, Change the emotion. I reject it. I shouldn't feel that way. I don't want to feel that way. I should feel some way. I should literally try to control my emotion. Don't be sad, be happy. Mm -hmm. uh, do you met do, do, do anything in your measure picking up? I think the critical issue of trying to control your emotion, changing. Yeah, we use also other measures like cognitive reappraisal. So how the parent try to uh, cognitively change their thoughts on uh, such situation, but uh, it's not included in this profile analysis, but we measure it. You can have a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's about parental involvement in a lot of what you have to is the style of parental involvement. There's also the amount of parental involvement. So how much time are they medicating? How old? Uh, engaged are they with their children? And uh, I know in some past research, style is interacting with amount. So, uh, so very heavily involved parent who's very controlling can have more damage than an uninvolved parent who's not controlling amount. How are you use amount? We didn't measure the amount, the the quantity of parental involvement mm -hmm. because of also in our previous studies we found very well the results because. Um, um, we found that um, the outcomes of parental involvement are more related to the quality of parental involvement. So that's why we used the SDT framework. I think it's a better way to capture the effects of parental involvement. Well, I think not. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that the, the, the quantity of parental involvement depends heavily on how old the, the child is and in which development the stage they are and how well they perform in school and where do they really need their parents' involvement and to read together, for example. Yeah. When I think of profile analysis, uh, I look at profile analysis as level or shape and profile analysis is useless if it's level because it's just taking a whole bunch of variables and just categorizing this high, medium, and low, and throwing out half of the variance uh, in the growth uh, categorization. So level profiles don't do anywhere near as well as the variables that make up the profiles. For a shape, uh, that involves some sort of complex uh, interaction or something like that. Now, uh, I couldn't quite tell from your profile. They looked like they were substantially level, but maybe a little bit of shape. Now, shape. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it would mean that if you re if you reverse scored all the negatively oriented ones, so they were all positively oriented, were all the were all your profiles? Did they just vary in level of goodness? Uh, uh, and that would be an important. Uh, character thing to look at with your your profile mm -hmm. and also just an interesting test would be if you take the variables that make up your profile uh, how well do they predict the outcome relative relative to your profiles so mm -hmm. if the variables that make up your uh, profile predict 50 percent of the variance 
and the profile is presented to 25% of the pyramids. And that's pretty typical. Mm -hmm. That's not unusual. I mean, I'm not being sarcastic. That's typical. That's a typical finding the profile analysis. Yeah. Then that means you're throwing away a lot of the variance. Uh, and I mean, you should think of profiles as sort of factor scores, uh, growth factor scores, um, using exploratory Mm -hmm. uh, analysis because you, I don't think anybody's come up with a way of getting confirmatory uh, uh, profiles yet. Right now, yeah. I'm sure that's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. But the profile now, I mean, they're they're intuitive and it's a, a wonderful way of describing the data. But mm -hmm. you may be throwing away a lot of mm -hmm. predictive variable yeah. by categorizing mm -hmm. uh, uh, into profiles like that. Yeah. Thank you. Congrats, such an awesome program of research, really Thank impressive you. and um, theoretically consistent and just really important. Good job. Um, I'm interested in the, you said you hadn't thought too much about the implications, so I don't know how deeply you've thought about each of those profiles insofar as they're useful, <laughs> but I'm so intrigued by the anti-authoritarian mm -hmm. profile that was high autonomy support and high walk, almost no structure and low control, yeah. and that was not good for any wasn't the winner in any of your predictive outcomes. Um, I just wonder if you've given that any thought at all. I think in because in that in that profile, can I show that? Yeah, yeah. Kind of speaks to the black importance of structure a little bit because yeah. that's the way it's different. I mean, it's very very anti control, mm -hmm. but what it lacks from the supportive profile is structure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That absence um, seems to be important for, I mean, the, this doesn't win in anything. It's just not particularly good, even though on the surface you might think that an autonomy supportive and warm profile would be a good parenting structure, especially if it's super anti any form of control, but it's not good, which is interesting. Yeah, it's not good enough, at least. Yes, yes. I think also because our um, that the adolescents, the parents refer to, are still in their early adolescence, mm -hmm. so they need structure. Ah, that's a good explanation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it will be interesting if we extend the sample even um, to to cover the whole adolescence mm -hmm. to see whether in late adolescence the structure is still yeah. so important. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. I think that's yeah. a really yeah. good explanation. It'd be good to look at it developmentally too, yeah, so from really young children, yeah. uh, and doing it both with um, parents as well as children's perceptions. Mm -hmm. You know, because I would think that children's perceptions of their parents might be even more important than actual. Oh, yeah, they are. You know, like it's it's what they they see. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I'm surprised who hasn't said self-concept <laughs> theory would be a good theory to include in this rather than this FDT stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now there are a lot of studies they found that um, children have much more stronger effect on their parents' behaviour mm -hmm. than the other way around, which I found very interesting. So, so down the track, you also look at different cultures. So I know your your yeah. relative was based on US mm -hmm. parents, but no, say from the Asian culture, yeah. it's a very different mindset of a parent in terms of the collectivist culture, yeah. you know, and see how that would affect you know, in terms of That's parental true. involvement. Also, European attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A real hybrid sense of the parents and the children. Yeah. 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 Much of that? No, I actually expect um, much higher uh, um, proportion of supportive involvement because in Western cultures we we know that um, that that being supportive um, very common, or at least I assume it's very common. Standard deviations. Is that what they are? Yes. Mm. yes. So that's yes. not like low, maybe indifference, not quite right. Like mm. point by standard deviations above the mean is yeah, it's not too bad. Maybe it's not indifferent, it's just um, not like overly effortful in yeah. either direction. It's sort of more like normative or I don't know. Yeah, so well, yeah. 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 
Any money for the cat. I didn't ask that. So we really like to know from the flavor of the indulgence in different systems. We could, yeah, we so we could put, put, put your bars. That's it. Oh, oh, yeah, so, yes, 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 yes. Okay, we've got three conversations going on. <laughs> Everyone online can't follow the three. Can we take them one at a time? Herb, then Emma. Herb? I just said it'd be useful to put error bars. Yeah. On there. But I, I have a substantive question. Um, you have, you, you sort of, I wasn't quite sure. You know, uh, over controlling is really bad, particularly from an SDT perspective. Uh, but uh, the difference between control involvement and provision of structures. So that's like a positive provision of structure is sort of a positive controlling. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and I mean, the, the labels sound really different, but uh, is that two ends of a bipolar scale or is it? Uh, I mean, you know, you have need satisfaction and need frustration. And <laughs> um, do you mean, do I understand correctly that I should include also as a. No, no, no. I was just, I was just uh, asking about uh, the relationship between those two. They, they seem to me to be uh, uh, the negative aspect of controlling and the positive aspect of controlling. You can understand you exactly. can have that. controlling and autonomy support each other. Sure. No, no, I understand yeah. that. I understand that. But, uh, and that's the nuance that yeah. I can. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Are you saying it could be bipolar, though? No, uh, what I'm saying, you know, I, I, I'm looking at the relationship between two of them. I don't even know. Uh, I, I don't even think, and I don't even know whether these aspects and deep frustrations are are bipolar or separate constructs. Uh, uh, that's an interesting topic, and as I say, they're separate constructs. But I would think that this sort of uh, excessive control and uh, and helpful control might be something related to that. Uh, well, it's on the account. The variable here is measured as I think it is psychological control. Yes, not the same structure. Like yeah. Yeah. It's what? Psychological control is just an emotional contingency. Both of it's not really about the structure. Behavior. Yeah. 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 Ye
what's predicting the profile that that pans out in. And you had some good stuff in there. Yeah, mother and the, yeah, the mother of the child, the gender of the child. Yes, yeah, super surprising to me that SES doesn't at all mm -hmm. in health. That's the predicts everything. So that's really um, interesting. Um, when I'm picturing that causal model, there are a couple of other things that it seems like maybe you've measured um, the course of being included. So like, I can imagine that it's easy to start out as a really supportive and caring for your first child. And by the time you get to six, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> the context. if you have a family of children, um, I wonder if number of children predicts profile is what I'm getting at. And not just number of children, but where in that list of children. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I would measure that. So yeah, you measure it. Yeah. But I wonder if you could. Yeah. It doesn't include yeah. oh, right. this analysis, but yeah. we measure that. Yes. Yeah. And what was the result? Did it? Oh, I have to look at it. Um, is this about children in general, or the children, or a single child, or no? Um, children in the, uh, the school grades, the school, the school range, the, the grade range, sorry, the nine, uh, six to nine grades. So they're answering about the children that fall within that window. Yeah, the yeah. children that fall the, under the, yeah. the youngest children yeah. in this window. Okay. So, yeah, but most of the parents in our sample have only one child in this uh, disorder. Well, they're answering about their youngest child in that. Uh, yes, he has two. So, mm -hmm. if they only have one child in the middle, it will be about that child. So, if they have two children, they'll talk about their youngest. Yes, got it. And then, the second thing I was thinking yes. is so that causal diagram then leads to the next causal diagram for the outcomes of students, achievement and emotional, uh, parent emotional and burnout sort of thing. Um, and I've already forgotten what I was going to say about that, but I'm thinking one second. Um, in that one, it seems like it would matter a lot, kind of what um, I think Rich is getting at, which is that in most families, there's more than one parent. And so if you have a really controlling parent and a really indifferent parent, and if you happen to measure the indifferent parent, it's probably mucked up your causal diagram because the controlling one matters a whole lot more. And I imagine you haven't measured that, and it's also hard to sort of ask uh, mothers about fathers, parental involvement, and vice versa. But have you considered measuring that? We can do that in our FNR project like in Luxembourg. Yeah. <laughs> we will collect data in school so we can um, ask the child of the post calories to participate in our study. Oh, yeah, super, super interesting. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? So if not, can we come back to my questions? <laughs> Do you want to say something? Yeah. The parental needs satisfaction or frustration as predictors, outcomes, or reciprocal relationships of mediators. Mediators, yeah. Mediator. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And how is that possible to test it within the mixture? Um, Model. What's well, tough, but you could, uh, I mean, uh, you're excited about the stability of the profiles. Mm -hmm. And first of all, you should get an index of that. Because uh, uh, I would guess that uh, if you get, get, get a high spirit translation and uh, transformation into an R, uh, then it's not as high as you're suspecting that it, that it, your, is, it looks like just with those values. But uh, from that perspective, what might be most interesting is the change scores. Uh, so if you look at uh, what is change in uh, profile related to, uh, that's not, it's not reciprocal effects, but it's a step in the right direction. And that you're looking at uh, people that go from this to this, what is that? That's, that's sort of, that's sort of getting at that. And I guess you could also look at, uh, uh, what what characteristics predict change? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's possible to do that in M plus. Pardon? Is that possible to do that in M plus? Uh, I just did it in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just a thought. So it was just a thought experiment. Yeah. 
but I mean, they're just change scores. Yeah. Yeah. I'm predicting not to take advantage of yet is. 40% had a disability, had a disability. Yeah, that's so right. That have a yeah. Particular preparation story for the start. Yeah, I, I can include that. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. So thanks, everyone online as well. Please give a round of applause. Hold on. Before we close, I want to make sure that everybody realized that uh, our prodigal son has returned. <laughs> <laughs> and we're wonderful.